Welcome back to Startup Essentials brought to you by Carta. In this episode, we're going to talk about one of the biggest questions that we hear from new startup founders and employees, which is what are stock options and how do they work? Working for a startup is cool for a lot of reasons, but one of the biggest ones is that you're typically granted equity or ownership in the company that you work for. Most commonly, especially if you're an employee, this equity is going to be granted to you in the form of stock options, which would be great unless you've never heard of that before and then it's really confusing. So if your company gave you stock options and you're not sure how they work, don't worry, you're not alone. Over the next few minutes, we're going to learn all the basic stuff you need to know. What stock options are, what are the different types, how do things like option grants and vesting work, and more. But before we get started, if you find this kind of startup education content useful and you want to see more of it, do feel free to grant some stock options to the like button. Hit subscribe and tap the little bell for notifications. It's helpful for us here at Carta to understand what what kind of content's useful to you so that we can continue making more of it. And with that out of the way, let's get into it. This is all the basic stuff you need to know about stock options. So right away, let's start with the big question, what are stock options in the first place? Essentially, they're just a form of compensation, meaning just like a salary, you can be compensated with stock options for your work at a company. But here's the thing that trips a lot of people up. Just because your company grants you stock options doesn't mean you actually own any stock. Stock options are not stock. They are stock options. And the whole reason they're called options is because your company is just giving you the option to buy shares of stock at a preset price if you decide you want to buy them. But you don't own the shares yet. At this point, you just have the option to own them. Now, here's the thing. The reason this is cool is because of that preset price I just mentioned. Essentially, your company is taking a big batch of shares and just cryo-freezing them for you at today's price. So if the value of the company's stock goes up in a year or two years, et cetera, you still have the ability to buy your shares at the frozen price you reserved on day one. This means theoretically that the second you actually buy your shares, you could instantly and automatically make a profit on paper since you're buying at that frozen low price and the shares have gone up in value since that time. Now, at this point, there are a couple pieces of vocab that you're going to want to know. The first one is the word exercise, which is basically just a fancy word meaning purchase your shares. Essentially, your company is going to grant you a bunch of stock options, and if you decide you want to actually own the stock, you're going to exercise or purchase the shares. You can exercise them all at once, or you can exercise them little by little over time, or don't buy any of them at all. They're your options. You're not required to exercise them if you don't want to. Basically, they're just reserved for you at that frozen price if and when you decide that you want to exercise them. The second term you're going to want to understand is strike price, also known as the grant price or exercise price. This is literally just that frozen price that your company is reserving for you. And when you exercise, voila, your options are going to magically turn into real life shares or stock. Another way of saying this is your shares will strike or magically come into effect, aka strike price. So if you ever hear people say stuff like, I exercised my options at a strike price of 30 cents, you know what they really mean is I bought my shares at 30 cents a share. Okay, so we know what stock options are at a high level, but it gets a little trickier when you start pulling back the thread because that's where you learn that there are different types of stock options that you can receive. For the purpose of our lesson here, we're going to focus on the two main types of stock options, which are called ISOs, or incentive stock options, and NSOs, or non-qualified stock options. If you take away nothing else from this part of the video, just remember this. The main difference between these two types of stock options is how they are taxed, meaning that when you do stuff with them, like exercise them, sell them, etc., you're going to be taxed on those transactions in different ways depending on what type of stock options you have. The high-level summary goes like this. If you receive ISOs, which is pretty standard if you're getting stock options, then your shares could qualify for some special types of tax treatment, provided that you meet certain obligations like holding on to the shares for a certain period of time. On the other hand, with NSOs, you usually have to pay taxes twice once when you exercise your options and once when you sell them, which might be a little bit of a red flag, right? It makes you think, wait, why would I pay taxes when I exercise? I'm buying the shares, I'm not selling them, so how am I going to buy the shares and then pay taxes on buying the shares? How does that make sense? This is a great question, and the TLDR is 
Think about it. Technically, you might feel like you're just buying the shares, but in reality, you're actually making money on paper when you do it. Because remember, if your strike price is from like two years ago and today's share price is higher than your strike price, then technically the second you buy your shares for that low price, you're automatically making a bunch of money on paper. And ipso facto, you're going to get taxed on that profit. So with NSOs, that's why you typically get taxed at both points when you exercise and when you eventually sell. Now, it's worth mentioning that some companies offer other types of equity awards, like these things called RSAs or RSUs. We'll do another lesson on these types of equity later, but just to be clear, if you have those, they are not the same as stock options and they are treated differently for tax purposes. Okay, you know your company is granting you some stock options, right? But you still got to buy them. So how does that work? Can you just buy them all right away? The answer depends on how your options vest, which is a new vocabulary term that you're going to want to know. So let's throw it up on the screen here. Vesting is essentially just the process of earning your shares over a period of time. Think about it like this. Your company isn't just going to give you all of your options on the very first day, right? Because what if you exercise them all and then just quit? Instead, they're going to use this process of vesting to incentivize you to stick around for a longer period of time and keep contributing to the company's success. So over a period of several years, you're going to slowly earn your options bit by bit. And every time you vest another little batch of options, you'll now be able to exercise them. This is called a vesting schedule, and typically it has a few key components. The main one you're going to want to know is the vesting cliff. Think of the cliff like a buffer period that lasts for a finite amount of time. Usually it's a year. And during this buffer period, you're not going to vest any options at all. You and the company are just going to scope each other out and make sure that you're both in this thing for the long term. And then once you hit your one-year anniversary at the company or your cliff, voila, you'll suddenly vest the whole first year worth of options. And then from there, you'll start vesting on a more regular sort of schedule, like every two weeks, every month, etc. So let's use an example. Say you get a job at a company called Meatly, and they grant you options on a four-year vesting schedule with a one-year cliff. For the first year, you won't vest any options. And then on your one-year anniversary, you'll suddenly hit the cliff and vest 25% of your options all in one day. And from there, you'll slowly vest the remaining 75% of your options over time until you hit your four-year anniversary at the company and you are officially fully vested. Okay, so that's all well and good, but people don't always stay at companies for years and years, right? So what if you're in the middle of your vesting schedule and you leave the company? Well, typically right away, your stock options will stop vesting the moment you're no longer working at the company. And if you have any options left that you haven't exercised yet, you'll be given a set period of time to exercise them before the company just takes them back. This period of time is called the post-termination exercise period, or PTEP. And here at Carta, we work with most of the startups in the U.S. Typically, we see companies use a PTEP of around 90 days. But that's starting to slowly change, and companies are offering more and more generous PTEP. Here at Carta, for example, your PTEP lasts for however long you actually worked at the company. Now, when it comes to stock options, this is all just scratching the surface. And as we talked about before, when it really starts to hit people is when they're paying taxes, which is why if your company does use Carta, we actually have an entire team of equity tax advisors who specialize in helping employees one-on-one -on -one to understand all the stuff they need to know in order to make smart financial decisions with their equity. So if you or your company want to learn more about that, we've got a link right downstairs in the description, as well as a whole bunch of other resources namely Equity 101, which is a full video course. I'm in it, and we made it to help teach you step-by-step -step about how all this equity stuff works. So feel free to check that out. It's totally free. And of course, if you found this info useful and you want to keep seeing more startup education content like it, we do encourage you to like, subscribe, hit the little bell for notifications, and we'll see you next time on Startup Essentials by Carta.